Google, look at Google, what it did today, right? Google was down 104 points today, but the worst part of this decline is not the 104 points. The worst part of this decline is what could potentially happen next. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, uh, good evening everybody. Just a quick update for uh, September the 28th. Hope everybody is doing well. I got a soccer tournament. My daughter has some sort of state cup soccer tournament opening round game. So I just want to kind of make this short and sweet and uh, you know get you guys uh, on your way. Uh, what a difference 24 hours made. Uh, yesterday, you had all these work... Uh, Worries, right? Wall of worries. You had the debt ceiling. You had the Evergrande. You had um, you had everything under the sun that could possibly derail the market. But the market kept on being resilient, right? Resilience is the name of the game. It's been like that for a very, very long time. And yesterday, what was strong was technology, especially semiconductors, really rallied off the bottom. Uh, you had IWM, the, the, the cornerstones of speculation capital, very, very strong rallied yesterday. Uh, you had names like Goldman Sachs, a lot of the financial names moving higher because of potential uh, Fed tapering and rising rates. So everything looked so good yesterday. And again, this is why we always say you could have an opinion. Uh, you could have a course of action. You could have a, a, a battle plan. Everything needs to be confirmed. And that's, and that's the, the, the most important part of being a trader. You're going to be wrong a lot. Okay, You're going to be wrong on your assessment, your opinion, your sentiment. But again, as long as you are not pigheaded and being wrong financially, uh, you're going to be fine. So if you're in this business for likes and shares and retweets, you're gonna you're doing it wrong okay you're, you're doing it wrong don't be afraid to have an opinion and don't be afraid to be wrong in that opinion and the market is is very easily uh, in a position to humble you if you are starting to trade against reality so everything that was strong yesterday kind of went away very very quickly uh, pre-market you saw a, a pretty aggressive move down at one point uh, the, the queues were down, you know, like one and a half percent to start the day. Uh, you had exploding, uh, explosive rising yields obviously did not help uh, the technology sector. And the question was, can these stocks that have been so resilient over the last uh, several days, right? And just every single shot that they've taken to the mouth. Remember the, the Rocky Balboa market? Can they again, once again, uh, buy the dip and start going higher? And today was a completely different story. Um, everything that was strong yesterday, right? You had uh, the, the financial stocks, they got killed. You had uh, the Russell, the IWM, speculation money, they got killed. You saw uh, the stocks were incredibly strong yesterday, the semiconductors that were leading. And again, this was leading uh, up to uh, Micron's earnings tonight. And when you look at Micron's earnings tonight, Obviously, you can see which way the direction is holding. So everything that was valid yesterday going into today's session literally got blown up at the open. And the question was, what was going to happen next? And we saw what happened next, right? The market uh, sold off pretty aggressively into the close. And not only did the sentiment change, not only did the narrative change, more important, the confirmation from last week's low of, of how this whole Evergrande saga started. We confirmed Monday's low, and now we are looking for this 5860 and 56 area to follow to the downside. Obviously, uh, Micron is not going to help things uh, in the technology sector. You can see, already see a lot of the uh, names that were really weak this morning and really weak this afternoon ahead of Micron's earnings are still continuing uh, to slide. And now, you know, not only do you have names that are just kind of like not here nor there, there's a lot of names that are breaking down. And you, you, could, you could look just through the members of the NASDAQ 100 and see how exactly they're mirroring uh, the NASDAQ 100, right? You had Amazon uh, starting to break down here, right? You have one more day, one more day Amazon loses this bottom channel here. Look how much room you have to go. And again, if this starts mirroring uh, the QQQs, you are gonna get a very aggressive pull. Uh, if Google, look at Google what it did today, right? Google was down 104 points today, but the worst part of this decline is not the 104 points. The worst part of this decline is what could potentially happens next 
if the cues confirm. Again, if you believe in the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, well, here, the, the next demand zone on, uh, on Google is 2889. There's a lot of room down. Uh, a name like Apple, right? A name like Apple is very close, challenging uh, last Monday's low. A name like NVIDIA, for example, right? First close below the 50-day moving average. If this thing confirms down, and follows with the weakness of what Micron just reported into earnings, again, you have a lot of room down as well. Uh, Apple, Facebook, right? Facebook, one by one, these channels are starting to either get confirmed to the downside or first close under last Monday's low. And again, it's very, very tough if you are uh, a bull bias, a buy bias trader to kind of going into tomorrow's session and say, yo, I, I want to be long. Maybe you will, maybe you won't, maybe you'll be right, maybe you'll be wrong. And again, even a name like Tesla, and we knew Tesla was going to have a little bit of a rest day today. Uh, unfortunately, I made the decision not to get long off the five-day moving average, which kind of sucks uh, because it held the five-day moving average and put up a $9 candle to the close. But even a name like Tesla, who's been on a brilliant, brilliant run, uh, we're still seeing tremendous amount of really aggressive uh, money deep out of the money calls but the most important part is we're seeing these deep out of the money calls going into weakness you know and we're not talking about five thousand ten thousand dollar bets if you go through your option scanner and it doesn't make a difference which one you use you're you're you're, you're quickly going to see they're coming in two three four five hundred thousand eight hundred thousand dollar bets uh, million dollar bets that they're coming in with some really good institutional money flow on weakness of Tesla obviously eventually if the market holds up and it starts attacking this channel here then we can start really talking about a uh, big potential move back to the upside but for now it's very very tough if you're an investor of anything right literally of anything uh, to go into tomorrow's session and be like well I'm good, buy the dip, everything will be okay. Yeah, traditionally over your lifetime, every dip has been bought, right? And, you know, for, for you know, even going from 1927 crash to the 1987 crash to the dot-com crash to the mortgage crisis crash, all these crashes, right? And yet here we are. So eventually, yeah, is your shares are probably going to be higher 50 years from now, just like just like history always teaches. But again, there's no guarantee that they'll be up tomorrow. And the most important part is when you are a trader, it, it's not how much money you want to make. It's how much risk are you willing to expose yourself. And right now, based on what we saw closing below, uh, you know, last Monday's low, uh, taking down and, you know, the bears taking control back of the 50 day moving average on the queues. And now the question is, even if we have a dead cat bounce tomorrow, the question is how long can we build the base under the 50 day moving average and still be okay about your portfolio? It's a very, very honest question. I'm not looking to ruffle any feathers. Uh, it's, just, it's just kind of the reality. The longer we stay above the 50 day moving average, the higher we're gonna go. This, once we start getting comfortable and start making a, a bed below the 50 day moving average, you're probably gonna have uh, a higher probability, a shorter term pressure uh, in the equities market. Obviously, the debt ceiling uh, is still on the table. Again, I, I believe there's been maybe maybe you know eight, ten uh, stoppages of work for the government over the last X amount of years. Does it really have that big of an effect? Probably not. Um, I think uh, again, one of the more bigger worries is still going. What's still going on with this kind of on again, off again saga, what's going on with Evergrande. Um, you know, the, the, the rising yields, again, is gonna pressure uh, technology, but the question is, can the bulls fight back? You know, again, if we get a gap up tomorrow to the upside, I'll be definitely looking uh, for channels back to the downside if they start getting rejected. I think that's where the value is. If we get a gap down tomorrow, well, we have to start looking at more uh, aggressive ranges back to the downside. But if they do start reclaiming uh, some of the levels, then may we do have a dead cat bounce. We'll see. Again, you have to be uh, kind of open minded for tomorrow's session. Uh, but the names that are, you know, are just kind of breaking down, like we talked about, you know, Facebook, Microsoft, uh, NVIDIA, uh, Amazon potential. Again, maybe they'll be higher a year from now, two years from now, three weeks from now. OK, but for tomorrow, based on their close, if they do start confirming today's channels, you're probably going to see uh, a little bit more pressure uh, come in. We'll see. Right. We'll see, said the blind man. That's the most important part is have an open mind. 
uh, don't have any, you know, don't have any uh, expectations or uh, really strong bias to tomorrow. See how the channel is set up, especially after the 10 o'clock channel, and see what confirms. Guys, have a great night. Sorry for cutting this short, but I got uh, a soccer game to get to. Guys, have a great night, and we'll see you all tomorrow.